What's up, y'all? Y'all probably remember me making a video last year sometime. I don't want to date the videos, but that's when it was. And essentially, it was about my AC unit. I didn't realize at the time that my AC unit was a combo, AC and furnace. Having natural gas, I needed to figure out the difference between what the gas does for water and what the gas does for my heat. So heat pump does that for the water. Gas, well, heats up the furnace. So not rocket science, but for somebody not dealing with one of these old units like I've got it was. So let's take a look at what my furnace is actually. One of the annoying things about recording is that I can't flip right over without just turning around. So here's my unit here. You can see how old it is. Just a quick glance. You see how dusty the side of this thing is. Uh, it's been through heck and back. I'm not even sure how air gets through those things, but the air is working now. It was the capacitor, not the compressor, like the HVAC guys told me. You can see here, here's my line going to the power, and here's my shutoff valve for the gas. Now, what it's doing is when I hit the thermostat, out of this thing here blows cold air. You're supposed to have it set for auto, for it to automatically uh, adjust the temperature. You have it on on, it's just gonna keep blowing the way it needs to all the time. Supposedly it's not good and you know it can be costly bill wise and I'm not sure if air works the same way but we're gonna get to the bottom of this okay so I kind of already know what the problem is I've seen some of you guys YouTube videos and you're saying that it could be a number of things lift this out I've already unscrewed it you can see here a couple of things one the date I put that here that was the night or the 18th of last year for the capacitor right there. Okay, but that's on the AC side. Here, we've got one of these older Honeywell switches here basically telling us that, you know, that's self-igniting. You don't need it to manually light it. So here's our inducer fan here. We've got some other stuff up here, like the inducer switches. And initially, the guy was telling me, hey, something is faulty there, but, who would have touched something like that? Certainly not yours truly. There's your thermostat cords there. Right up here, I don't know the actual name, but here you go. You have your inducer fan, which turns on, which then sends a signal to uh, your pilot to light the gas line, which then has those burners lights up. Burners aren't lighting up for me. So, what it could be is the metal coil inside the burner. I can't really show it to you. Can't really get a good angle. But maybe underneath there, we can see it. Oh, blurry finger. Underneath there is that metal coil. You can see right there. That metal coil, what it does, get my fingers out of the way. Sorry about that. I'll try to be more professional in other videos. Uh, but what that does is that that allows the uh, flame to go. If that's damaged or dirty, corroded, whatever, uh, it won't light. Or maybe it'll light and then cut back off. Um, for those of you with a keen eye, you might also say, well, what about your flame sensor? Flame sensor would also cause that same problem. But if the uh, igniter switch, which I'm not really sure I could show you that either. You see that gray panel there? You would have to un unbolt that, and I believe that's where the switch was. You'd have to remove that. So after watching several videos on YouTube, I was just saying to myself, that's probably my problem. That's why it's not lighting up. Let's get to that point. HVAC guy got here. He wanted to argue with me because I guess I came off as a know-it-all. A lot of times people don't do their own research and they just pay these guys lots of money. And don't get me wrong, but warning labels are there for a reason. Electrical shock, hazard. So they get paid what they get paid because of that. But what you have to know, myself as an engineer, is how do these things work so that in the future I'm not handing out hundreds of dollars for something that I could have fixed myself. So we've got the fuse out, as you can see up here. And you see these uh, cords here. What are those for? Are these, these hoses? Well, 
those of you with the keen eye, you saw that my hose coming up here is missing. And that's because of what happened here. Uh, the guy was telling me, hey, it's my uh, inducer control here. And I'm like, uh, okay. And he's like, that's gonna be 1200 bucks. So I'm like, well, how about we start out with the igniter and then go from there because that's what I believe it was. He didn't want to hear that because he's a professional, he knows what he's doing, yada, yada. But after getting out his digital multimeter, we figured out, hey, that's not the problem. So even though this unit is older and he didn't want to deal with it, I'm like, look, buddy, you were already paid to come out here. Shout out to Groupon. Maybe that's why he was irritated and having a bad day. 25 bucks to come clean my unit, do a little tune-up. So I don't even think they checked the fans or anything like that, but he said he sprayed some kind of, some kind of, stuff that i don't know i'm seeing styrofoam there i'm not sure what he sprayed there but it's pretty brittle but he claims he did it i didn't see him do it so i can't say he did but uh long and short of it ace ac is fine like it should be that's really what i need this time of year but the way the weather's going it's either hot for a day and really cold in the evening where I need my heat and vice versa. It's been that way for weeks now. So in the middle of May, or I'm sorry, in the middle of the end of April going into May, uh, I'm expecting in May to not really need the heat, but you just never really know. You don't wanna wake up and have a freeze warning like I did the other week. I'm like, it was just 80 degrees yesterday. But rambling aside, I've got the fuse pulled. What it turned out to be is one of these hoses these hoses to the gas line if they get contaminated get debris in them guess what gas isn't going to run and if it does it's going to be for a couple of seconds before the unit doesn't want to you know over saturate it with gas and turns itself off so that's what was evidently happening to mine me scared of these flames and everything i really didn't want to mess with it at all but here we are we are going to mess with it what those hvac guys did was point out what they thought was wrong with how my unit was set up, but I'm like, hey, it's working, right? That's all I can do before I replace this thing is keep it working as long as I can because like most of us don't have that kind of money sitting around and uh, I should have insurance on something like this, but we'll get to that in another video. Long and short, he replaced mine with this plastic thing here. Well, newsflash, while that may fit, the plastic itself is going to do what you see it do here and that's burnout. And, uh, well not burnout, but melt. It melted this thing here. I don't know if you can get really a good idea of what it's doing, but it melted clean off and wasn't connecting. And so I had heat, what we thought was a problem solved for like two minutes and then it went back to what it's doing. So he goes, well, guess what I can do for you? I can come back out there for 80 bucks and fix it or you can uh, do it yourself and so that's what we're doing here we've got this hose here from AutoZone. it's pretty much like a radiator hose two foot hose and um, we're just going to connect that in there and see how things go from there so i'll pick back up when i connect that and hopefully everything's working the way it needs to okay so we're back we've got the hose installed there you see it going from this line and in the side there where it burnt out and you couldn't tell um, I'm about to go ahead and put our fuse back in here. So here we go. You always want to pull this because what will happen is if you don't, you're going to end up having a problem. So I have went ahead and put that back in there. And now I'm guessing I need to go in and turn the thermostat back off and back on again because I don't see any flame or anything happening right this second. So that's what we're going to do and come right back. It would also help if I put it in the right way and you hear that little spark sound, that's our igniter trying to fire up. So any second now, I'm imagining we would see it there she blows. If I can zoom in this a little more, you can see it. There's all three of them happening there. I'm going to head back in the house and see if we can feel any heat. But 
hopefully that's what the problem was and we don't have any more issues. If this worked for you, let me know. Uh, if not, let me know what did work for you and if you have a similar, similar unit to mine. Captain Sensation!